Today, I'm gonna show you how to turn an ordinary cardboard box into an awesome Star Wars display piece that you can be proud of. Watch to the end to see how it turned out. Let's get started. My name is Ryan and you're watching RJR Productions. Please consider subscribing because it greatly motivates me to make more videos like these. Also, if I get to 5,000 subscribers before the end of the year, I'll be doing a helmet giveaway. I started out by tracing out that visor piece, and basically what I did is I took my one from my Rex helmet that I made most recently, my most recent helmet, and I modified it a little bit to make it more of the animated style, and of course I changed the visor shape because that's also very different. Just make sure to take your time with this step and make sure that the back is also different because it's one long strip around the back. You'll be seeing that in about five seconds. Basically just mirror it on the piece of cardboard and then cut it out. And then once you have it cut out, you wanna make sure to add a support piece in the very middle. This is very important because it helps the whole thing stay together and it keeps the front of the face flat. So that's what you wanna do. Just bend those side edges and then glue together that front area. Also, you wanna glue together some V-groove cuts on the sides where those little cheek areas go. If you look at the helmet, you can see a little slanted area. So basically, that's what I did. And then you wanna start working on the dome. And the dome is just a big circle of cardboard, and then you add some circular bits. This is like the headband around the base of it. It's around 26 and a half inches in length, and then about two and a half inches tall, one and a half inches tall, something like that, I don't know and just glue those supports together to make it look like a nice oval and you just have to feel this out. But then once you have that done, you can start working on the gluing those two pieces together. So just take a big piece of cardboard and wrap it around as a spacer and then glue it on. And then you start working on the chin area. Now I did a couple of attempts for this, but it ended up looking really good in the final product. So just take a piece of cardboard and trace it out and kind of keep that groove continuing all the way down to the bottom and just add that teeth area and then add the chin on top of it. One funny thing that I was actually kind of worried about when I was working on this helmet is I didn't think I could make a good quality looking helmet because I hadn't made one in around two months. So I thought my progress would have stopped and maybe even gone backwards from that phase two Rex helmet I made. But after the outcome, I think this one's way better and I definitely still got it in me. So you just cut out that little teeth area and then you glue it onto the main helmet. And then you wanna make sure that the chin area is still slightly angled outwards, but you don't wanna make it like a 90 degree angle out. It's kinda of just gotta be a smooth sloping angle and you don't want it to be too extreme. And then once I had that done, I started working on the cheek tubes. Now what you can do is you can just make it a rectangle and cut a bunch of slits at one end and glue those together to make it tapered. But what I tried doing is making it kind of a small cone shape. And making this, this cone shape actually worked really well because it basically helped it. Like, you know, on some of my old helmets, the chin would be like really extreme and it would shoot out at a weird angle. But on this one, it kind of made it kind of flat with the back of the helmet. So I'm really proud of how that turned out. And then after those pieces done, what I went ahead and started doing was working on the chin area. So basically what I did is I took a couple pieces of cardboard and I try to figure out the shape of the main chin. And this was pretty simple to do. All I had to do was like trace out pieces of cardboard that could fit around those side tubes, but also angle inwards. And if you look at a good reference image of what the chin looks like, you'll be understanding what I'm doing. So there's those angled bits that kind of continue down on the cheeks, down on the chin, and then it goes a 90 degree turn and goes underneath the chin as well. And then there's a little bit of a indent and then that's where it finishes. And this took a very long time, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. Just make sure to add this little small end cap at the end, so it just has this little nice finished end on it. And then the next thing I started working on was the tube stoppers. So basically these, I wanted to be able to breathe out of them. So I just cut out a, a circular shape that could fit inside these tubes. And then what I ended up doing was just cutting a hole in the middle and it worked out really nicely. Now after I had those chin area done and those tubes started on the sides, the next thing I started to work on was the cheeks. So basically what I started to figure out is this kind of wall shape that goes around the edge. There's a little bit of border that goes all the way around. And once I had the front and side done, then I needed to get the back of it done. 
So the back of it is basically a really tall piece of cardboard that has a slant in it and then it gets really thin because this one actually has the ears stick out about quarter inch on each side. So basically I just added those walls on each side and then I cut out the really long piece as you can see here. And then once I had this long piece done, I just glued it on. I peeled off one side of the cardboard to make sure that it's flat. That's a very important thing you need to do. Peel off one side of the cardboard so it creates no edge where the corrugation is showing. That's one thing I tried to fix on this helmet is I tried to cover up where all the corrugation was showing and it ended up making the quality so much better. Like around that whole visor rim and on the chin, on the front of it, and then also on some of the areas in the dome, I covered all of that up and it looked really good. So I recommend doing that. It's not in the templates if you want to buy them, but it's, it's not that difficult to do. It just takes a little bit of time, but in the end it looks really good. Then once you have those cheeks on, you want to cut out a couple support pieces that go on the sides. And basically what these do is they just prevent it from caving in. But first thing, you need to finish the other side. And the other side's created the same exact way. It's just once you finish that edge bevel on the back end of the cheek, you need to make sure to cut out a support piece and then the final ear trim shape. And then once you have that done, now we can start gluing on those support pieces. So the support pieces are a little bit weird. They kind of, on this animated style helmet, they have a flat lip across the top. Because if you look at a reference image, you can see how it's flat. And then after you do that lip, then there's a little bit of a curve on the support piece and then it goes all the way down to the bottom. But the top of it's flat because of that detail area. So then once you have that done, you just want to take another piece of cardboard and kind of wrap it around that final shape. Make sure to put these supports on both sides. I did two on each cheek piece. That's pretty much all you have to do. You don't have to fill it all in with just supports. And then you can just cut out a regular piece of cardboard and kind of fit it around the shape. And then once you're happy with that, you can cut it out and glue it on. The effect we're trying to go for is kind of continuing that chin all the way around to the back. So basically you need to add some more supports to the sides of the ears, and then you need to wrap another piece of cardboard around. So just try to trace the back end and then glue that on, and then just take another piece of cardboard trim it to shape and glue it on over those supports so it doesn't cave in. That's pretty much their main reason why the supports are there so it doesn't cave in. And then once you got that done, we can start working on the back area. Now the back area is another big piece of cardboard, but it's pretty simple to do because you just need to add this little angled lip towards the bottom of it. And then you should be looking pretty good because, you know, continuing that lip all around and you just need to make sure that this back piece goes down to be about level with the rest of the helmet. Also, what you need to do is make sure that these ear pieces are shorter than the other ones, at least from a bottom view. They don't go as far in because what you wanna be able to do is put your ears in the helmet. And if that doesn't work, then you're in trouble. So here you can see me figuring out a shape to put on the back edge as the lip. And then I was really happy with how that turned out. So I decided to do the piece of cardboard underneath it. Also, what you should do is cover up the corrugation on the top of the dome, that little lip area. So this is what I'm doing right here. I just cut out a piece of cardboard, removed all the corrugation except for one side, and then I trimmed it to where I thought those little, that back groove would go, and then I glued that on. And then later on, I glue on another piece that goes on on the back side. And then here you can see me working on that back area again. So yeah, it's just another curved piece and you glue it on at the back and then wrap, your, wrap it around all the way to the sides. And what this does is it creates an angled groove and this ends up looking really good. Just make sure to take your time and it should turn out looking good. Just make sure that the length or the width of it from a side view is no wider than what that back of the ear is. And then it's time to cut out a big square of cardboard. Now this is almost a rectangle, but at the bottom edge, it has a little bow or a curve that goes across it. So just make sure to do that. Just like look at it from a side view and try to keep that straight line of a descent or ascent of the, the lip at the back going all the way to the back, but it kind of levels out to be flat there. And then the same as the front where you have that little angled bit that goes right at the top of the cheek. You're kind of making four walls around that. We also need to do that at the back. And one thing that you might be seeing that I'm doing is I'm not adding that whole back box on yet because it's much easier just to make this all in one piece. It doesn't need to be split apart like that. 
Just make sure to cut out a bunch of supports. I think I did seven or eight across the whole back part. And just make sure that they're all uniformly spaced out. And the reason why is so it doesn't collapse anyways. And also so it's like a nice uniform shape. I started doing this on my Arc Trooper Jesse helmet, the last animated style helmet I've made back in May, and it ended up looking really nice. So just make sure you take your time with that, and it should end up looking good. And then you just gotta start working on the back lip. Just make sure to get that support area done, and then once you have the supports done, it should look really nice. One thing I ended up doing is I actually messed up this back lip, so I had to tear it off, and then I shortened some of the support bits at the very back, and then it ended up looking much better and then I re-wrapped it. You can see me here cutting out the first attempt. And what I wasn't happy about is that it stuck out so much at the back, it stuck out like an extra inch. So I just had to cut it down to maybe a quarter inch of length. So the main reason why I do supports all over the helmet, as you can see like all across the back and then inside these and inside these, is basically it's a fail safe if you accidentally leave this on the floor and you step on it. So here's an example of what that'll look like. Very weak. Strong. Now you can see me re-wrapping the back and basically what I do to create the back template piece is I cut out a bunch of small bits and I glue them on over each ring of the supports. And then once that's done, then I cut that piece off and I trace it out in one nice cohesive piece and then I mirror it to the other side, trace it out, and then I glue that whole piece together and then glue it on. It's very simple to do. You can see here that it's already done. I just need to tear it off and then glue it on to the other side. So basically just make sure when you're tearing it off to not, if you're not gonna buy the templates, make sure when you're tearing it off to be very careful because you don't wanna ruin any of the progress you've already made. But then once you have that piece taken off, you can go ahead and mirror it on a big piece of cardboard and then make sure to cut it out, but very carefully. Just make sure that you don't cut all the way through. I accidentally did that once. That's a big problem. So just make sure to glue that back together. It can be fixed with spackle later on, but it's just a bigger pain to do. So just make sure to take your time with this step. And then once you have it all glued together, you can take that piece and glue it on to the back end. So I just glue it in the middle first, and then I work my way to each side. So if there are gaps, they're on both sides instead of one side, if that makes sense. And then the next thing I started working on was the back area. So I just cut out a flat piece of cardboard with kind of some angled bits on each side, and I glued this piece onto the back. And then once I had it glued on, I was made sure to make it spaced out at the very bottom. And then I just glued on a wall around the side. So a wall that kind of fit on each edge, and then a wall that fit on the other edge. And just make sure to trim the bottom edges so that nothing bad happens. You can see, you wanna make sure to put your hel head in the helmet. And if that doesn't work, then that's a big problem. This helmet I made a little bit big, but you'd rather have it be a big helmet than a small helmet. Because you can always wear a big helmet, but you can't always wear a small helmet. So now once that back area was done, I started to work on the dome. So basically what you want to do is trace out the top flat area of the helmet, kind of take a piece of cardboard, put it on top, and then hold your pencil underneath it and trace out half of it. And then cut off about an inch and a half, two inches on each side, and then flip that vertically and glue it on. This is all going to get removed later but it's just a fail, it's not a fail safe. It's just something that protects the top from caving in while you're working on it and it keeps it nice and uniform, just like on each side. That's the most noticeable area. So basically I take a big piece of cardboard that's maybe two and a half inches wide and it's like 13, 14 inches long and I just cut like half inch grooves every inch and a half, something like that, maybe every inch. And what this creates is you can glue those together and it kind of creates a tapered piece without using a bunch of pieces of cardboard, if that makes sense. So basically you wanna glue this down at the very front of it, and then you wanna make it glued at the very back as well. And then once you're happy with that, you just make sure to glue the whole thing together. It's kind of a pain, but it ends up looking much better than if you just use flat pieces of cardboard. This is a more advanced way to do it. If you wanna do it simpler, then you can just make this a flat piece of cardboard instead. Mine ended up coming a little short at the back, so I just added another piece of cardboard to help it fill in. Basically, what we're going to do after we're done constructing the helmet is we're gonna use a product called Alex Flex Flexible Spackle. And what this stuff does is it makes it very easy to cover up all the seams. That's why I'm not very worried about making new seams because what you can also do is you can paper mache, but that leaves some seam lines where the pieces of newspaper go. So basically, that's just what I do. I use flexible spackle. 
and it works really well. Just make sure to be careful when you're working with it because you're gonna have to sand it, so just try to smooth it out as much as possible. And then the next thing I started working on was the extra dome parts. Like you can see along the sides, I'm adding those. Just take another piece of the same type of style cardboard that you used and glue it on on each eighth of the helmet. And then right here, I started working on the visor. Now this part was very fun. You just need to trace it out so it fits around that earpiece. And then it has a like three inches of space below it. And then it just goes straight up at a diagonal angle. And then I just, I, this is a mock-up right now, so it's not gonna be the final one. But I just added some curves with pieces of cardboard, bending it in irregular ways. And then once I was happy with the shape of all of this, then what I went ahead and did is I ripped it off and then I made, flattened it out, made it into two pieces, the side piece and the top piece. And then I mirrored that top piece, made two of those side pieces, and then it was ready to be glued onto the helmet. Just make sure when you're constructing it, you're very careful and you don't rip the cardboard on accident when you're bending it, because this piece needs to be bent a lot. Basically, once you have the whole visor done, you just wanna make sure that it's very form fitting to the helmet, like as close to the dome as you can make it. Also make sure that it's slightly slanted downwards and also make sure to add a second layer of cardboard to each edge. So what I ended up doing was adding a piece of wire to the inside. So I took it off and then I cut a little groove along all the sides and then I shoved a piece of wire in there and then I added a second side piece, a second top piece and a second other side piece to cover up that wire. And basically what that wire does is it allows you to spackle it much better because it prevents it from cracking since it kind of forces it to stay in the same place. Now I spent a lot of time on this visor, but I'm really happy with how it turned out. Just make sure to make that groove very clean and don't cut all the way through the cardboard. And then just bend the wire correctly so it fits all the way into the helmet. You might not be able to see it very well, but that's because this video that you're watching right now is an hour's footage sped up into about 30 seconds. So that's why. And then what I had to do was glue on a piece of cardboard on the front of each piece. So that's trace out the front shape, glue it on, and then the sides, glue it on, and then the bottom, glue it on. You don't need to worry about the back because that's gonna be flush with the side anyways. So it doesn't matter. And then right here, real quick, I started working on a little side detail. It's just a box with a little antenna out of it. And the antenna has a little bit of a triangular piece on the top. You'll be seeing what that pretty much looks like later on it's very simplified and it doesn't need to be complicated at all and then the next thing I started working on was finishing up the dome so I just took small pieces of cardboard and glued them inside all the gaps and I just trace it up and then go to the inside trace a little the triangular shape and then glue it in the gap and I started working on the fin on the top and the fin is just two pieces of cardboard that's about 9 10 11 inches long and two pieces of cardboard laying on top of each other and then the edges have another edge on top of them. And then the next thing I did was start working on that back trim area. So this is when I added that extra covering of corrugation. And basically what this does is you just put that piece of cardboard in that back groove that you just cut out, and then you trace it out from both sides, and then you glue it on, and make sure to cover up that back cap as well. And then once you have that glued on, you can fill in this groove with another small piece of cardboard. Now what I ended up doing is mine was a little short, but it didn't really matter since the visor piece would cover up the front of that anyways. And then you wanna start working on the other two fins on the sides of the helmet. Now, if you're making this, you need to make a choice. Are you going to attach these now or are you gonna attach them after spackling? Because basically what it does, it makes it a little bit harder to work on like sanding and things like that, but it also prevents you from spackling as much of the dome. So it's your choice. Do you want to spackle most of the dome and then glue these on later? Or do you want to spackle less of the dome and glue these on now, but have a little bit of a harder time sanding? That's what I chose to do. I chose to work on them now. And then what I did is I just glued two, one on each side, and then I glued on a little detail piece on top of it. And then I spent a little bit of time just working on some walls for each of them. So just take some pieces of cardboard and glue them on the fronts and then all the sides. So that means there are six sides total. It takes a decent amount of time, but then once it's done, it should look really nice and look really clean as well. And once you have this done, that's pretty much it for the construction of the helmet. We're gonna be adding those extra thick ear pieces and the back detail a little bit later, as well as the chin details. So take these two main pieces outside and start spackling them. Basically, all you need is something to watch, a, the can of spackle, a putty knife, and a cup of water. It doesn't need to be warm or cold. 
And you can see here how fast the TV show I'm watching is moving. It's because this is probably the most boring process of the whole helmet, but it's also one of the most crucial because it makes it look 10 times better after it's done. So what you wanna do is just get your finger in the spackle and then wipe it across the helmet to try to cover up those gaps and then grab the water and smooth it out. Basically what I used the putty knife for was just filling in the smaller areas. And then you're gonna to want to start sanding the helmet. Now to sand in between those helmet grooves, what I did is I took a piece of cardboard and I wrapped sandpaper around it to get it in the groove. Make sure you spackle there because there definitely will be seams in there. Just make sure to avoid sanding in one area for too long because you don't want the sanding to look like a lumpy mess. And then also make sure to sand down that visor piece because you want to make that smooth as well. And then after this is done, you're going to want to prime over the spackle that you just put on. Just make sure to blow off all the dust with a leaf blower or an air compressor or something like that. So you can see here I'm running a little bit low on this can of primer. So basically any flat or satin color would work just fine for this primer. Just make sure that it's a color that can go on in one coat. Like for example, a yellow satin can't go on in one coat, but a black one can, or an orange one can't, but then a gray one can. So just make sure to do whatever colors you can. And then on this visor piece, I used a cinnamon color for the, the final ending look. It's either cinnamon or paprika. Just look for something like that. That's the color I used. And I also painted, finished the painting with that same color. And then I painted the front of it with a rustic orange. And then I was marking off where I would paint that paprika color on the front of this. Because if you look at Captain Vaughn, he has that little darker orange strip on the front or the red strip on the front and then below both eyes. And then just make sure to mask off everything else except for those front areas. It really isn't a big deal if you don't get everything because you don't need to mask off a bunch of things. And basically what I ended up doing is I ended up masking these off again and darkening them a little bit with some brown paint. So I took some brown paint, put it on the paintbrush and just put it over it and it ended up looking much darker and much more accurate to the final color that it's supposed to be. And then once you have this done, you can start masking the whole helmet. Make sure to do the same darkening technique on the visor though. And then once you have that done, we can start masking. So for masking, you just wanna take some painter's tape and mask it off of all the areas that you wanna remain orange. So basically that just means covering up the whole face and then working on that top upper area. And basically what this does is it just allows the areas that aren't covered to be painted white. So keep that in mind. Make sure that the only areas that you want to be still orange right now will be white after you paint it. It basically just has a sloping edge that goes from the chin all the way up to the top of the helmet. So just keep that in mind. And then it has this like these grooves that go in between those visor or the helmet dome things. I don't know what they're called, the fins. It's just white that goes all the way through that, and then it kind of has this little angled zigzag detail, and then it goes down to the top, and then there's those two diamond details on the sides. And then after you paint it white, you can take off the masking tape, and you can start weathering the whole helmet. So basically what I did is I started adding, before weathering, I added some of the smaller details that I haven't done. Like for example, at the back, there's another, there's another detail, the back circle, and that's very important to get down. And then you need to start working on the chin details, and those are very easy to do. And then you need to work on the side details as well. Now the side details are a little bit complicated, but basically what they are is they're just a piece of cardboard that's a little bit smaller than the ear piece. And then it goes on and it wraps around to the bottom. Basically what you also need to do is you need to add a piece of cardboard to the side of that to keep it nice and uniform. And because it needs to keep it in shape and it needs to make it look clean so you don't see that side area. Just make sure to cut out two of those pieces because from one piece you can peel off both sides and get one piece done. And then once you have both of those pieces done, you can start working on that back circle. And the back circle just basically sits flush on the back and then it has a little bit of a rectangle on top of it. So right now I'm working on the, the lens that goes in this. So I just cut out a piece of plastic that fits around the same size. And then I just have a piece of 5% window tint that I'm going to apply with onto this with a spray bottle. So I'll be back once I have that done. And now it's time to hand paint some of the smaller details. So just mask off the areas that you don't want to get painted gray in the teeth and then just go in there with the paintbrush and paint them gray. It's that simple. And then some other areas also need to be painted like there's dry brushing all over the whole helmet. So I took some white paint and basically dry brushed it around all of the edges. And basically what this did is it made it look weathered just like the character in the TV show. Now this is the point where you can glue on all those other details like those ear details and the back detail. 
and now you can see that it's really starting to come together. Now those other details like the light on top of the helmet and those side details, those side gray details don't need to be done now, but you could start weathering all those pieces now. So basically what you do is you just start painting them with a watered down black paint. But first you need to paint some small areas white. So basically, basically you need to paint some of the areas that you didn't hit with the spray paint that you missed. Just paint those white and then it should look fine after you've weathered it. Now weather some of those smaller details first to kind of get the hang of it before you start working on the big helmet. Because it's better to mess up on one of the smaller things than one of the big ones. Trust me, I know that feeling. So you can see that all the weathering is still there right now. What you want to make sure to do is when you're weathering with the black wash, you want to make sure not to wipe off all of that beautiful white chipped paint that you, effect that you just created because that would really mess it up and you don't want to do that. Just be very careful and also fill in all the grooves that are supposed to be there with some more black paint. And basically what I do is I do a round of this dark black wash over the whole helmet. And then what I do is I do just regular black paint in all the grooves and I don't wipe it off as much. But that just makes it look much nicer. And now we can start gluing things on. So just glue in all the chin details and then that detail at the sides, both of those, and then you can glue in the visor or the lens. And then you can glue on that other visor piece that's on the, the front of the helmet, the main big show of the helmet. And this looks really good once you glue it on, it's really starting to come together. Now I'm not gonna show you exactly what it looks like until the very end because I want it to be like a you know dramatic reveal. But basically just glue on all those sides, make sure that it lines up and then you should be done. Thank you for making it all the way through to the very end of this video. It means a lot to me. If you have any suggestions that you want me to make for future props, leave those in the comments down below. And also again, if I get to 5,000 subscribers before the end of this year, then I'll be doing a helmet giveaway. This has been RJR Productions, signing off till next time.